Somebody called me a fanboy. Yeah, he's not wrong. Corsair's ML series fans are among the coolest and quietest on the market. Problem? No RGB. Solution? Add RGB. And just like that, Corsair's magnetic levitation fans are now a significantly more attractive option. The fan body is made of a really durable plastic with barely any flex under pressure, sporting swappable rubber dampeners on either side to prevent vibration noises against your case. And the seven fan blades are translucent white for effectively diffusing the lighting. You'll find two cables at about 61 centimeters in length each attached to the fan. One cable is a standard 4-pin PWM cable for controlling fan speed, and the other is for controlling the lighting. Unlike Corsair's SP and HD fans, and similarly to their LL series, the LEDs on the MLRGBs must be controlled through Corsair Link, and therefore you will require either a Lighting Node Pro or a Commander Pro. Pairing these fans with the latter of the two will allow you to create some really neat fan curves, including letting your fans drop down to 0 RPM when you know you're too cool for your own good. The triple pack I was provided comes with a lighting hub and a Node Pro, so to connect everything up properly, the three fans plug into the hub, starting at port 1. Each port must be populated in order. Skipping one will result in all subsequent fans being sad and gloomy. From there, the hub needs to be powered via SATA and connect to one of the channels on the lighting Node Pro or on a Commander Pro. The Node or Commander are also powered via SATA and talk to your computer through your motherboard's internal USB header. Once their hardware is in, you'll need to go grab the Corsair Link application. When you open it up, you'll see your Node or Commander. Simply click on the dropdown, select MLRGB, and add as many fans as you have connected to the lighting hub. Now that the setup is done, let's take them for a spin. You can pick and choose from Rainbow Wave with 3 speed options and direction control, Rainbow with 3 speed settings, Color Shift allowing you to phase between two colors or any color at random, Color Pulse giving you the same parameters, Static because what kind of fan doesn't have some sort of static pressure? That's what that means, right? Temperature because we need to pretend RGB actually serves a function. Blink, so you can say that it wasn't your fault, you just got distracted. And Sequential, which spins me right round, baby, right round. Well, what about performance? Cool it, I'm getting there. Here is an overpopulated and quite frankly disgusting chart full of numbers and figures regarding fan specifications of various models I've tested so you can make some comparisons of your own. Now, exactly how bad do these fans suck? For testing airflow, I used two of each fan as intake for the i7-7700K processor clocked at 4.5GHz and 1.2V, cooled by the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3 cooler and the GTX 980Ti Amp Extreme graphics card, with CPU and GPU cooler fans locked to 1000 and 1500 RPM respectively. For radiator performance, I slapped a couple of these on the Deep Cool Captain 240EX AIO, cooling the i7-5820K processor clocked to 4GHz at 1.295V. In both instances, I used the Corsair Crystal 570X case with no front panel, front filter, or exhaust, and the temperatures shown are normalized to an ambient of 25 degrees Celsius. All of these tests were rerun since my last video, so the numbers are fairly recent, but I would like to remind you that I don't have the proper equipment to do this with absolute objective certainty. So, these figures should not be taken as irrefutable truth and should only be used to give you a general idea. And warning, the following images are… graphic. For our air cooler results, we see the fans bring our CPU and GPU to 58.405 and 63.2 degrees Celsius respectively. Compared to the competition, it's not super impressive, but I'll elaborate more on that shortly. On the radiator, we find that the stock fans, oddly enough, are best in terms of performance, but I did note that they were significantly louder than the rest. The MLRGB fans come in ever so slightly warmer, but at much lower noise levels. Performance and aesthetics are some of the perks, but f***ing magnets, how do they work? Well, the magnetic bearing allows the fan rotor to be separated from the housing, which reduces noise created through friction. The fan is also supposed to be good at pushing a considerable amount of air at lower RPM. Redoing the test on the 7700K system with each fan targeting about 45 dBA, where the noise floor of the room sits around 41, we see that they do… okay. But they don't particularly stand out. To be fair, none of them really do, except for the HD fans, which blow the most. Note that the AMZ Tronics fans only have two speed settings, the slower of which sits at 42 dBA and can be seen on this chart, and the NED's AI Prismatic fans only have one speed setting, so they were omitted from this test. It would be identical to the max RPM one anyway. Also note that while I included Thermaltake's Ring RGB fans before, I don't have them here. My controller died, and I don't have another one, but you can check out that video in the top corner if you want to see where they stand compared to some of the fans in this video. Impressed? No? Good, you shouldn't be. For the last test, I drop all fans to as low as they'll go. Only the PWM controlled fans were included here, as the rest were already about as slow as they'd get. You'll notice that Corsair's HD series fans perform the best here, but that's also with the highest RPM. As his fans come in second for the CPU, but that's also due to their higher minimum RPM and with a higher noise level. 
Aside from that, the maglev fins are ever so slightly quieter, but otherwise don't rise above the rest in any particular way. Don't trust my numbers? That's okay, neither do I. There's a good chance I'm doing something wrong, and again, this isn't done in a perfectly controlled environment, so there's a lot of room for error. But there's also a good chance that you're not using these in a perfect lab either, so maybe these results are what you can somewhat expect. I would like to note that while the ML fans aren't noticeably quieter than some of the others on the list, the magnetic levitation bearing does actually eliminate the friction noise on the rotor. If I listen carefully to a few other options, I can faintly hear the higher frequency of the bearing, but it doesn't exist on the ML series fans. The microphone may not pick it up very well, but trust me, it's there. Or not there. At the low, low price of 200 US dollars per fan, these are a pretty expensive option. Just kidding. But that certainly makes the truth a lot more palatable. A triple pack of 120s includes a Lighting Node Pro and will run you 120 US dollars. A double 140 kit also includes a Lighting Node Pro and will cost you about 100. A single 140 will run you 40 bucks and a single 120 will be 35. Note that you will need a Node Pro to access any lighting effects, which nicely transitions us to some things I'm not too fond of. A lot of you have asked if you can mix different kinds of fans on the same lighting hub, for example, connecting three HD fans and three ML fans to a single six-port controller. The answer is no. Your lights won't behave. That being said, Corsair has four RGB fans on the market that excel at different things. The SP fans are their budget-minded option, even though they're still competent when it comes to pushing air. The HD fans seem to be the best in terms of raw performance. Their LL fans excel in silence and, subjectively, appearance. And the ML fans are the quietest I've ever not heard. I've got HD and LL fans mixed in my build, and I wouldn't be surprised if you wanted to do some mixing and matching of your own. If you decide to go that route, you'd occupy both channels on your node or commander, which doesn't leave you any left for LED strips if you wanted to stick those in as well. If you want everything, you'll very quickly end up with a rat's nest of cables unless you've got a lot of space to work with. My next issue isn't a huge deal, but it might be depending on your configuration. The LEDs on the fan are outward firing, directing light into the blades, as opposed to the SP fans whose LEDs shoot perpendicular to the PCB and into the fan rotor. While this leads to more light being distributed into the fan blades, you do get some hot spotting, and if you're looking at the back of the fan from an angle, you'll be able to see the LEDs directly. So depending on your configuration, they might be more distracting than you initially bargained for. And with how expensive these fans are, I hope you can bargain. These next bits aren't necessarily flaws, but more things to note. The original maglev fans could spin up to 2000 or 2400 RPM depending on the size, and you'll notice that the ML RGB fans here cap out at 1200 or 1600 for the 140s and 120s respectively. While the lower RPM leads to lower noise levels, I'd still like the option to ramp things up. And finally, can you put these bearings on those LL fans, please? I'd love a set of Corsair ML, LL, LOL, THA, TSA, LL, TTA, MONEY, RGB fans. That would definitely brighten my day. All that being said, you get a pretty good fan for a fairly scary price. The lighting is bright, vibrant, and Corsair's effects are smooth as always, though I would be lying if I said I wasn't overhyped just a bit. Like all of Corsair's RGB fan lineup, they all perform really well across the board, but each is just marginally better at something else over another. If you want the quietest of the bunch with some RGB flair, this is a pretty fantastic option, if you're okay with exhausting your wallet. If you want something close for less, you can't go wrong with any of the rest. Pretty much any of the remaining options really put the air in Corsair. And you know what else is fantastic but doesn't exhaust your wallet or have anything to do with air, aside from covering your bare back? A new shirt every month. t Blocks is a subscription service that aims to send you shirts that are tailored to your interests. When you sign up, you can pick from up to 10 different categories including, but not limited to, games, DC, Marvel, anime, and more. For $8.99 per month or $6.99 when you overcloth with a 12-month prepay, you can expect a new shirt delivered to your door each month with a different design within one of your selected categories. They offer two options at the moment, a standard T-Blocks where they send you officially licensed shirts from the aforementioned categories, or the Community Blocks where they send you shirts with designs from contributing artists. There are also plans to release a premium block soon, which comes with a licensed shirt and a couple of relevant goodies. 
If you want to check them out, you'll find a link to their site in the description, and if you want to save 10% on your entire order, you can use the code ALITTLEDIMTBX at checkout. All the fan testing in this video was pretty exhausting, so if you disliked it, I'm just going to assume you were holding your device upside down. And that's all I have to say about that. Like, like upside down, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you got them. Thanks for watching, my name is Steven and I am a little dim. Bye bye. It's a good thing these were winter release, because if I were to do this in the summer, my room would very quickly smell like Chinese food. Which might not be so bad. The fan body is made of a really durable plastic with little wit ooh, I'm skipping words. The fan body is made of a really durable plastic with little wit wit <laughs> A really durable plastic with a little, little <laughs> plastic with a little <laughs> takes so much longer to edit these when I mess up more. Plastic with a little with little to no flex on <laughs> with little to no flex. With little with little with little with little to with little with little to no flex under power. Really durable plastic with a little <sighs> Really durable plastic with barely any flex under pressure. Sporting swappable Sporting swappable swappable swappable. So to connect everything up properly, the three flan flans. The three flans. Performance and aesthetics are some of the perks. But fing magnets, how do they work? Ah, something got in my eye. I thought I did that one pretty good too. Yeah, I've been humbled by what appears to be dust. Or a bug, I don't know. Performance and aesthetics are some of the perks. But f is my eye still red? <laughs> if I listen carefully to a few of the other. If I listen to a. If I listen to. Blah, 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 blah. But that certainly makes the truth a lot more paddle. Pa 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 pal palatable. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love a set of Corsair M L L L L O L T H A T S A L O T T A M O N E Y R G. Corsair M L L L L O L T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A L O T H A T S A